Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and I am joined by Mr. Vinny Play. Man, that's a great joke. On the third recording, it's even funnier, yeah. don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we had a chance to go hands on with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You know, on the elevator ride to the Ubisoft Lounge, we were getting a little pumped a little. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this fucking game. And then we finally got our hands on it. And I actually walked away pretty impressed. How do you feel overall? Oh, it delivered. Yeah. Big time. Absolutely. I think it exceeded my expectations because you guys are really excited for it. And I, I was too, but I think, you know, with Assassin's Creed, it's kind of formulaic. Like, we mm -hmm. always kind of see the same thing over and over again. Definitely. And this game kind of really set it apart for me. Yeah, because there were some drastic changes. I think we should start off with the setting. That's pretty much the most important aspect mm -hmm. of any Assassin's Creed game. This one's in ancient Greece during the Golden Age. It sticks out very clearly. The, it, the color palette, especially when oh, you're yeah. exploring the world. I, I said like five times to myself, whoa. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's absolutely sure. gorgeous. Um, the architecture. This is stuff that stood out to me in Origins. You hadn't had a chance to play it, right? No, I haven't played Origins yet. Yeah, for me personally, I always said that the world of any Assassin's Creed, especially Origins, um, it just pops. It stands out, and especially with Origins, it had so many different regions, so it was a very attractive world to explore, and it seems like Odyssey, in my opinion, continues that trend. But what it doesn't continue is some of the drastic combat changes. We have abilities in this yeah, game now. And they're sick. Yeah, they definitely are. Like, we saw people being able to, like, we can Spartan kick people across the map. Yes. Pulling people's shields from them, just hitting mm. them with it. It's that's sick. That's not an exaggeration. When you say, like, Spartan kick them across the arena, you launch them. Yeah. And some of the best audio feedback I think I've ever experienced in a game. I don't want to be too hyperbole <laughs> coming off this hot take, but yeah. seriously, this was one of the most satisfying kicks to ever deliver yeah. in a video game. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, wasn't I freaking out the whole time? Bro, you were. You kicked them across the stage. Yes, thank you, Brian. Anyway, other combat changes, you could heal mid-battle. This was all through the yeah. adrenaline gauge, which was something that we saw in Assassin's Creed Origins. It was more like a rage mode, if anything. This seems like an evolution of that. You and expanded on it, for yeah. sure. As someone who skipped Origins, though, and now you're hopping into Odyssey, what was the last Assassin's Creed game you played? Uh, that would be Unity. All right, so <laughs> you played that one later, too. Yeah, way later. I, I beat it, like, this year. Yeah, so how do you feel about the changes to combat? It, it feels a lot a lot more in-depth in this game. Yeah. You know, you have a lot more options on how you want to approach combat. Yeah, the only thing that I get a little worried about with the combat is the rinse and repeat of a shielded foe come up to you, you hold LB, press B, you rip it off of them, and then they're a normal enemy, which is fine. Yeah. It encourages you to use that ability. There are a lot of abilities to pick from. There were three different skill trees. Once again, this is kind of similar to Origins, but you could have like a warrior path, a hunter path, and an assassin path. Yes. And it unlocked a lot of different abilities. There's one I personally unlocked where you could actually set your sword on fire. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah. It was almost like a stun. Yeah. Right? And then everyone it, around you would kind of get pushed back and mm -hmm. then you do more damage. And yeah, damage over time. It, it was almost like they were having fun with it. Like the ridiculous Spartan kick, setting your yeah. sword on fire. They almost said, fuck it. It's like, just fun. It's, exactly. It just they, they said, it's just fun. Let's just have a good time with this. What they also did was added conquest battles. And those were fucking awesome oh, yeah. too. They were very impressive. All the enemies on screen <clears> fighting. <throat> And at mm. the end, we just said this big like behemoth that we have to yeah. kill right at the end. Like that was sick. Yeah, especially I, I was very impressed with when you kill them. I thought you know somehow like if I turned the camera away from all the bodies, they'd fade away, but nope. the bodies stay on that battleground right there. Mm -hmm. Um, the developers had told us it was 150 versus 150 combat, which I think is pretty insane. Yeah, that's impressive. Especially for how good looking the game is. Mm -hmm. It really sells the idea of these epic battles that you can partake in in Sparta. You're, the reason you're doing the conquest battles is you're working to like liberate the region. So these yeah. conquest battles actually have meaning in the game. Yes, that's right? true. It, it definitely is a big part of the narrative. It's once again, the fear though is, okay, that was awesome. First time we ever experienced a conquest sure. battle. Then we get the full game, we start freeing regions, his conquest battle is going to become a rinse and repeat mechanic. I don't know if it'll lose its flavor, but it, it was really fun the first time Definitely. around. It was a ton of combat, and they count up how many people you kill, all mm -hmm. the special figures in that battle you kill. There's still, like I said, the leveling up thing, so you gain XP from all of this stuff. It's a really good time. And they just make you feel like a beast when you're yes. just like, you're just in the middle of the fray, you're just killing people left and mm -hmm. right, you just feel sick. It absolutely is sick. And they also did a good job with the naval combat. You didn't have a chance to play that no, part. No, I couldn't play it on my demo. Yeah, but I think this was kind of based off choices, because you played as the female, Cassandra. Yeah, and she was sick. Yeah, and really I played I played as the male character, Alexios. And I think based off a choice I made during that quest line, there was Kira, and then there was the other guy whose name I'm actually forgetting right now. So the Spartan Lieutenant. Yeah, and when I sided with him, it was more of an attack-heavy approach to the situation, and his mission involved taking out these Athenian ships. 
So when I did that, it would involve a lot of naval combat. I don't know if you made a different decision though. It was more arcadey. For example, there was a, a hold A to do a turbo boost and the guy was telling me, cause I was taking forever to turn the ship around. And the developer's like, yeah, if you hold A to turbo boost, you can pretty you can much whip it the ship? around. Yes. Wow, okay. And really it's designed wrong. for ramming though. And, and when you do hit the ship at a low amount of health, you split it, it's really satisfying. So there was multiple abilities on this ship. There was the fire arrows. There was also just normal arrows that you could do damage over time. You could board these ships if you got them to low enough Black health. Flag style. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So they took some inspiration from that. There were actually treasure chests on the ship too that you could loot before it actually had sunk. So I really liked this. I thought it was a nice addition. Origins had naval combat sections, but they were linear and based off the story. You couldn't just go off and do them much like this where you have your own ship. It seems like the game is kind of trying to take itself a little less seriously with this like arcade approach. And yeah. Assassin's Creed has kind of always taken itself like a little too seriously for mm -hmm. me. Like they focus a little bit too much on the story and it's like it hasn't been that strong in the past couple of years. So yeah, I think this is more of an um, interesting approach. Yeah, but what's weird is that we have that perspective on the gameplay but then you look at the story and how they want your choices to matter mm -hmm. they want all this different dialogue choices that were very witcher-esque mind Definitely. you the, the ui <laughs> was straight yeah. up out of the yep. witcher and when you look at that versus the gameplay it can be a little polarizing almost definitely yeah and I felt like Geralt playing this game yeah <laughs> yeah a little bit just no fire coming out of our hands yeah, that's true did you like the rpg elements added because i know it can be a little jarring for longtime assassin's creed fans i mean i obviously love the addition of it it's just how is the execution going to be when the game finally mm -hmm. comes out it's kind of hard when we're playing just a demo 30 minute demo to really see yeah the impact of our decisions but i mean so far it looks pretty cool yeah i mean we saw a romance option yep. <laughs> and i was playing as alexios and like i said we were with that spartan lieutenant and there was an option when he was talking about taking out the soldiers to take him out or something along those lines and yeah. you could really talk him up it was almost bioware-esque the old school bioware i'm talking about well i, I played with cassandra and there's a, a scene where he's like hyping up the spartans while he's talking on a ship and you talk to him yep. after and you kind of ask him like if he's single and he's like oh yeah no, I'm, going same. For, I'm going for kira yeah and she, and cassandra's pretty disappointed by that yeah so <laughs> and that's pretty awesome that they even included something like that you can see with Origins, they said, okay, we're definitely going to take inspiration from The Witcher, and you saw some elements of that, but this one, I feel, it's actually truly taking inspiration from those definitely. types of games. Which isn't a, a big problem, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You can always learn from another game. Yeah. Especially with the uh, conversations, it was really hard to take away anything negative, despite only playing for an hour. And the open world activities are something that could be a point of concern, because like you said, Assassin's Creed is very formulaic. And for me, one of the things with Assassin's Creed Origins was every area involved enemy camps, and you take those out, and it would just be a rinse and repeat, no matter whether it was a side quest or just an open world activity. For me, some of the open world activities I discovered were the synchronization points, they're usually in Assassin's Creed Destroying games. Destroying things, yeah. taking out camps, like you said. It gets repetitive, so yeah. that's a concern, obviously. Especially, we saw how big the map was. It's mm. huge. Oh my god, yeah. It's gigantic. <laughs> I so. looked at it, I was like, you yeah. gotta be kidding me. Yeah, it looks way bigger than any Assassin's Creed game I've ever yeah, seen. So. Yeah, absolutely. So there's gonna be a lot to do, it's just a matter of where will there be that quality. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins did have some solid side quests inside the title. It's just a matter of that repetitiveness. And I just hope they don't reuse those same open world activities. Yeah. Well, now that we have RPG elements, you know, you got to wonder how good the side quests can become, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we'll see in due time. But overall, I'm making room for this in the fall. Definitely. I'm I'm, per I'm personally looking forward to playing it. Summer. And I have nothing but good things to say about it so far. I talked to the devs a lot and just really gave them my praise. I was like, this is a same. really special game, I feel. And I'm not a big Assassin's Creed guy. Like, it's one of those series that I was skipping out on. And I played Origins, but I wasn't Me crazy too. about it. Anyway, Vinny, thank you so much for joining me of on this. Of course, thank you. Yes, and we will catch you guys with probably future Assassin's Creed content. We were jazzed enough to keep making content about it, so we'd love to hear your thoughts on this game in the comments down below. If you have any questions, fire away as well. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content we create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.